Hi, I'm Jason Gorber from ThatShelf.com and we're here looking at the 77CX OLED. Big change. I don't pretend to be a gamer. As I've mentioned many, many times before, one of the things that's actually saved me is my ability to actually get motion sick from most games, which has prevented me from having to spend my time doing that. Instead, I watch films for your viewing pleasure. But nonetheless, we wanted to look at how this setup is actually working. Now I have a full bandwidth HDMI cable going into my preamp, which is 4K accessible. Obviously it's what my UHD drive and all of those elements actually go through. But if you go to a resolution here, again, I have 4K UHD, but if we go to refresh rate and I kick it to 120, what actually happens is it does its tests, it goes through, the refresh rate isn't supported with your current resolution, so we set you the highest resolution. In other words, my preamp will not allow me to actually have full 4K 120. I'm going to have to have a cable that plugs directly from the Xbox into the television. Now the disadvantage of that for me is that I would not be able to actually have things play on this unit and actually get full audio. There's only one HDMI uh, out on the back of the Xbox, which means that that HDMI would go into my television. My television would then communicate the audio back to my preamp. But because I don't have eARC in my preamp, my preamp is a couple years old, it will not do a full pass through of full high definition audio. Now this is not a big deal for many, many reasons and for many, many people, but for me, it's sort of a deal breaker. The fact is that audio means more to me than actually gaming means. What I'm going to do now is show what happens if I actually plug this directly into the television and show some of the setting changes that you actually make plugging into a, a dedicated HDMI port and what you would actually do on this setup. So I plugged in my regular HDMI cable, which is a fiber optic cable. Um, it's a 50 foot run uh, actually from my preamp to the television. Plugged it into HDMI 1 rather than HDMI 2 just to see what would happen when you first plug in the unit. You can see that it shows here to provide an optimized picture quality ultra HD deep color will be turned on for the current port. Great, good to know, thanks for letting me know. I click OK, this actually kicks in. And let's see what happens if I actually change this to the 120 hertz refresh rate. I want to confirm rate, and I'm still getting that the rate isn't supported with my current resolution. So we've set to the highest resolution supported. I'm gonna click on keep new resolution, and it's got me at 720p, 120 hertz with this cable. If I go to my 4K details, you can actually see it supports 4K at 60, it supports 4K at 120, but it's not actually allowing me to do that through this setup. Just for fun, I'll try forcing this, and I get a black screen. So I'm gonna try it with another HDMI cable just to see how that behaves. So I've now run a cable, which I know works. Uh, again, an 8K rated cable, which is directly now from the Xbox into the television. I'm gonna try setting it to 4K, oops. I'm gonna try setting it to 4K UHD with 120, see how it actually behaves. Keep this resolution, yes, and we're good to go. So again, I bought an excellent HDMI cable. It's been phenomenal for everything that I've been running. I have a reasonably long run from here to my television. It's running off of fiber, but the fact of the matter is it wasn't behaving with the Xbox. Now I could play with this, but this just shows the kind of frustration that you have. You just want a cable to work. And sometimes it's even that is a little bit of a challenge. Nonetheless, here we are at 4K 120. If I go to the 4K TV details, I'm seeing green check boxes for all of these elements. Now, because I changed to HDMI one, my picture mode will be different. I'm holding down the gear and you can see it's set for the automatic power saving. Now, as I've mentioned in other videos, if you go here to picture mode and I select, for example, ISF Expert Dark, which is what I normally have set up in my HDMI 2, because I was able to have apply to all inputs, this is now the correct settings for this. Now, once we actually get an HDR gaming and all that, all of this will change. But nonetheless, it's something to keep in mind in so many of these televisions that the inputs change what color a setting you can actually have and the mode changes which color setting you have. So if you're showing something in SDR, in HDR, or even in Dolby Vision, not that that's relevant here, um, it, it changes that. I should say it is relevant because you can play games in Dolby Vision, you can't play discs in Dolby Vision, which is one of the more ridiculous things that are actually taking place. Nonetheless, that's what's going on here. You can see that I can go to additional settings and this I could actually set in all my game responses. 
So I can, it's already preset for HDMI 1. It realizes what kind of device is actually plugged in and has already set it up for an instant game response. Now, one of the things, this is fundamental here, the technology of OLED is such that even when you turn everything off, OLED is still behaving as OLED. Each pixel is still turning on or off on a pixel level, which means the darks are still dark, the lights are still light. When you are playing on an QLED, whatever they call it, a, a, uh, the other form of technology, which is uh, the, the majority of television sets, yes, you get things to look pretty good when you're watching a film, but when gaming, not only is there a lag in terms of the refresh rate of the display itself, but by turning everything off that makes the picture look better, you get a worse picture for a better gaming experience. Whereas on OLED, the reason that this is in many ways ideal for gamers is that even once you turn everything off, all the post-processing, everything, so you get the lowest latency possible, you're getting excellent, excellent picture. One thing that is a concern is image retention. Everybody is very paranoid about how it works with OLED in terms of um, burn-in, as, as it's called back in the plasma days. Fact is the burn-in is almost impossible to do. You literally would have to have a static image on for months and months and months. They've done all kinds of tests on that. Image persistence is basically when the pixels actually age at a different rate. And the fact of the matter is sometimes for some gamers on some games, when it's a very, very bright um, element that's, that's on uh, the screen and you're playing for dozens of hours at a time, there is concern that those pixels, those individual pixels will age at a different rate than the rest of the screen, which means that that persistence can continue. That does happen, but it often takes forever for that to happen. And as they've been going with uh, developments in OLED, they've done more and more ways of ameliorating that. So the fact of the matter is for film viewers, it's almost impossible to actually break it. For gamers, it is possible, but even then it's significantly more challenging um, to actually get image persistence to take hold and actually ruin your television. You almost have to work at it. Older models, it was much more of a concern with contemporary models. They've done significant things to actually improve that. In some ways, they actually reduced the image quality for certain things by actually allowing image persistence to be reduced. Something to take in mind. It's a balance. Do you care about that the game looks the best or do you care that the game won't ruin your television after playing for years and years and years? The fact of the matter is that I think that you want it to look the best that it's possible and the ultimate screen for your gaming remains an OLED. Now, as discussed, there are different ways of getting your picture. As discussed, there's different settings for different picture modes on this television. If you're in SDR, it's going to be one picture mode. If you're in HDR, it's going to be a different mode. There's actually this Calibrate HDR for Games setting. This app shows a series of test patterns to determine the characteristics of your HDR TV. And so you can actually go ahead here and show how it's supposed to look, whether this is pure black or actually has checkboards. And it's actually pretty nice. You can actually see pretty explicitly what's taking place in terms of the HDR. Now, I'm going to go in here hit the gear, and you can see that my default HDR is set for standard. That's not what I want. I want the actual calibrated one. So if I go down here and I go to cinema user, suddenly this image is going to change significantly. On the camera through YouTube algorithms, it's going to change quite a bit. But this, for lack of a better word, is going to look a little bit more red or yellowy than the previous mode. I will go back to standard and you'll see the difference, let alone vivid. Hold down the gear. Go to picture mode, choose this. If I go to standard, this looks what some people consider to be a whiter white. Really, it's a bluer white. And the fact of the matter is that it's this kind of brightness, it's this mode. If I go to vivid, it's even more ridiculous. But if this is the mode, this is a non-calibrated white. Cinema, this is a proper white. Now, this is darker and this is redder than many people are used to. And so you'll find a lot of people, particularly gamers, will actually just say, I don't care, I'm just gonna leave it on standard and just have the colors the way that the colors are because they're used to that sort of artificial impact. It's sort of like taking an audio file and tweaking certain frequencies that you find beneficial instead of what's actually on the recording. Any audio nerds will actually appreciate that. Nonetheless, I put it in cinema user. I hit games, I'm gonna hit exit on this. So many remotes that I'm juggling here. And let's dig in and look, see what a game looks like. 
Okay, we're taking a look at Destiny 2, which apparently is a game. Um, I have an assistant here who's actually stepping me through. I'm going to show you a trick for those that don't know. On the remote, if you mash on the green and you just keep hitting it, you actually get the free sync information. This is actually going to show about variable refresh rate and how it actually behaves. Now, what's weird about it is when you do it, it sort of is random, which Quadrant actually shows up on. But we're just going to leave that there. If you go ahead and start the game, waiting, and we're just trying to see what it actually, how it actually behaves. We're showing that we're showing at 5.5 hertz, fixed rate, in other words, it's not doing variable refresh rate, 4K resolution at 120, RGB 10 bit. So that, that's basically showing the full 4K 120 experience. And as we're spinning around here, I'm going to not watch this because <laughs> it'll throw up. Nonetheless, you actually have the articulation with that. If I go in here, I want to see what I can actually do to get a variable refresh rate to see whether or not that actually benefits this actual game. Okay, so what I've done in order to enable VRR is I've gone into my settings on my TV, holding down the gear icon. I've gone into additional settings and I've turned on instant game response, but also the AMD FreeSync Premium, which will allow variable refresh rate. You also have to make the change inside the Xbox itself, which you can do mid game. So if I go into video modes, you can actually see that it allows me all these uh, settings, whether or not I can allow 50 Hertz, 24 Hertz, low latency mode and variable refresh rate. If I turn both of those on, instant game response is launched. It actually kicks in, variable refresh rate is, is launched and all of these things are now allowed to happen. Interestingly, allow Dolby Vision is off because if this is on, these do not work. It's one or the other. You cannot have the, uh, the advanced color modes if these elements are on. Again, this is one of those balance. But because Dolby Vision is off, you're dealing with a native HDR representation of OLED, which again, OLED is much better at doing than any LED television. So if I again mash on the green, you can see here I have FreeSync active. If we go back to the game, it's kicking in and it's again showing FreeSync active. It will actually allow me to see the variable refresh. So it will go up to 120, but will actually, if required, reduce the number of frames that are actually presenting in order to maintain absolute sync with everything that's going on. Now, we're in a weird spot here, particularly for a game like this, where some people are playing on the new version of the Xbox, some people are playing on the previous generation. So there's all kinds of additional syncing, uh, syncing going on at the best of times. But what we're just trying to do here is to get the best possible information out of this onto the set, and this is the way to do it. So now we're at a game in progress. You can see FreeSync is active. At the moment it's 5.5 Hertz, but that number actually will fluctuate as the game sort of kicks in. You can actually see as a playing, you can see what it's doing. It's, it's, it's doing this to maintain absolute sync between what you are actually doing in terms of the controller and what you're seeing on screen. That is the advantage. So there's zero lag between what is taking place on this visually and what is taking place. For you to just throw a bunch of information at the screen Screen and have it be delayed that completely misses the purpose obviously so to have this kind of up and down fluctuation gives you total control at all time and the television thanks to its firmware updates and thanks to its technology is doing an excellent job at maintaining synchronization between something that like the Xbox and what's taking place on the big screen now again I can go here and I can make all kinds of picture mode settings. Again, it kicked in the game rather than standard, which we were before, or even cinema, because this is what we're doing to get the absolute lowest latency. All my color settings and all this stuff is unique to the game mode. I want to turn much of this stuff off. I can actually go ahead and leave this off. I can make sure the other color gamut. I can do different white balance. In other words, I can do a full calibration just for this mode. I'm going to go ahead and ensure that all of these elements off. Of course, on game mode, you're going to have true motion off because this is something that would add additional processing and create a lag. That is not the lag we want. So in game mode, it automatically kicks in on this particular setup. Once it sees the signal, it knows what to go through and you're getting low lag, absolute variable refresh rate, the best possible image that you can get from the Xbox to a screen particularly of this size. This will outdo any projector, any LED in terms of its response, and it'll have exceptional, exceptional color. Now, again, image persistence may be an issue, but the fact of the matter is, 
that if you take care of the set, particularly on the modern ones, I think that you will have many, many years of dealing with uh, systems like this without any issues whatsoever. For ThatShelf.com, I'm Jason Gorber. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please let us know in the comments if there's additional questions you have or anything that we can address. We look forward to seeing you next video. All the best.